Oh, Elaine is here too. All right, everybody's here. We're going to get started. And and so who we have here is we have Jeff and we have Sharon. And they are not only good friends, but they are uh, uh, brilliant entrepreneurs. And you guys know that in boot camp, uh, normally the Ask Stewart Hour is me and all of you. And you ask me anything and everything. I never know what's coming. But I also like to bring on experts, people who I know, people who I trust, where we can dig deeper into areas where I want more information, I desire to learn more. And that's why we've got Jeff and Sharon here with us. They're, again, not only good friends, but they built an amazing business, listen carefully, with a niche. If you go to their website, Ultimate All Inclusive Travel, you will see that it specifically says they've been in business, now Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, about 20 years, but for 15 years, their focus is resorts, all-inclusive resorts. And I think that's a bold move. Jeff, say hello and give us your elevator speech. Hi, this is Jeff. I'm happy to, happy to be on here, Stuart, and uh, look forward to speaking with everybody and answering any questions. Uh, basically, we started in 2003, and our philosophy was we were going to specialize in a particular niche. We were going to use the Internet to uh, generate leads, and we were going to deal with clients as if they were sitting across the table from us. Our strong suit is that we visit all the resorts we sell. We know them inside and out, so what we're providing for our clients is our expertise, our knowledge, and our service. Uh, I start any sessions that I do with one statement is we do not sell travel. What we do is we sell ourselves, our knowledge and experience, and we provide travel for our clients. Okay, I love it. Thank you very much. Great elevator speech, and, and we already see that, uh, that you've made a commitment to several things. How are you going to talk to people? What you say to people, and the kind of business that you're in? Um, can you want to switch? We want to meet Sharon. Sure. Hello. Hey, Sharon. hey how are Hi. you? I'm All good, right. thank you. All right, Jeff just gave us a, a, a before we start taking questions, start we start asking questions so we can learn from you guys and ask questions. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, really geared, if we can, more towards group. Uh, uh, What's your role in the company? What's Jeff's role in the company? What do you guys do? How do you work together? What are your tasks? Okay, my role is frontline. So I'm in answering the phones, selling travel. I also do the payroll, the accounting. Jeff does all the marketing, all the uh, vendor relations, and we split them up that way and it seems to work the best for us. Okay. And then we have the two. We have two agents who work here with us in the office. Okay, excellent. So you have you have a team as well that works with you. And before I start asking that first question, I want to ask uh, all of our uh, 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 audience today. First of all, welcome, boot campers. You guys are still flowing in, which is awesome. And I'd like to know if we have any guests here. If you're not currently a member of boot camp. I'm not going to call you out, I promise. I'll pick on you. I'm not going to put your camera on. I'm not going to put your microphone on. I can't do it, but that would be funny if I could. I'd like to know if you're a guest. Just go ahead and type in the question box and say, hello, I'm a guest, or say guest, or say first time. Because whenever I bring on an expert guest, like Sharon and Jeff today, I, I open it up to the whole industry. So I want to give you a little bit of a, a, a taste of what we do here every other week in boot camp. It's at the Ask Stewart Hour. If something keeps you up at night, but it has to do with business, it can't be if you have like a rash or something on your elbow. I can't help you with that. Um, you bring it here, and we want to help. That This is what we do here. Angela's a guest. Welcome, Angela. And I see there are others typing, and this is awesome. Well, welcome, and and feel free to type in a question or a comment, Angela, and everybody else. And you can either be a fly on the wall and get information and and use it and apply it, or you can be 
uh, you can participate and you can be really bold this goes for everybody and ask to uh, hi Geneva uh, and ask to uh, have your microphone turned on there's always one one in every ask Stuart arrow where you allow me to put your microphone on but you've got to type in turn my mic on and I'll give you a heads up so that's a little bit of housekeeping sometimes I say house cleaning but that's not the case it's house okay so uh, I want to start off with a question uh, uh, Sharon and Jeff which is as you guys start typing in your questions too I'd like to know um, you know can, can you give us like one two or three things that are different doing a group at a resort or with a resort versus a cruise ship <laughs> she gives me the easy ones. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Actually, it's it's it is different doing a group at a resort than a cruise, but not as different as you think. The main difference is with a cruise, you can block a number of rooms and or cabins and then sell into those cabins. With a resort, you can't do that. You have to have a name or somebody has to put a down payment down to block a number of rooms. Now, having said that, we actually have an independent contractor that is doing groups at resorts the same way you would do groups uh, on a cruise line. She does both, and her philosophy or thinking was, if I can do it on a cruise, why can't I do it on a resort? So what we did, we went to the supplier, it happened to be Apple Vacations, and said, look, we want to sell groups to all-inclusive resorts the same way people sell cruises, uh, cruise groups. And what they came up with was they didn't eliminate the down payment. They came up with a much smaller down payment, which the IC put up to block a number of rooms and now she sells into that block of rooms, and they eliminated the requirement having a having a name uh, attached to that particular room. So it works very similar to a cruise line, but it uh, uh, you still do have to put up a payment. So you have to be pretty confident that you're going to sell that block of rooms because you're putting a down payment down, and then you're selling into that block of rooms. Uh, they I, and I guess the message here is you can work with a supplier and they can manipulate the rules. They can't really eliminate the rules, but they can bend those rules okay. to come up with whatever it takes to get that group going to a resort. So the good news is you can almost do a group at an all-inclusive resort today the same way that you can do a, uh, a group on a cruise. Okay, uh, the, the questions are firing in here, and I'm going to get to them in just a second. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to fire out two quick questions to you, Jeff, okay. uh, and I'm going to give you a choice. The answer is either going to be cruise groups or resort groups. Profitability uh, is is it the same, or who gets the edge when it comes to profitability? Is that a Profit, tough question? profitability? Is I think resorts have it hand down over cruises simply because of the non-commissionable items that you have in a cruise versus the non-commissionable items that you have in a resort group. You're going to get, and the resorts are getting even better. For instance, if you're doing a wedding group, not only are you going to get paid a commission on the rooms you book, but you're going to get paid a commission on the items that the client books for that particular wedding. And we do that in our all-inclusive resorts. We do that in uh, in Hawaii also. We have we've hooked up with, and it's a company I know you're familiar with, the Shore Trips. Mm -hmm. And they now will do weddings, and they have agreements with a number of wedding coordinators. So you can do your wedding, you can do each item of your wedding, and you're going to get paid a commission on that. Mm -hmm. So infinitely, you're going to get paid a higher commission on doing resorts than you are on doing a cruise. 
Wow, that, that's great. And, and, and we're, we're going to come back to weddings in just a few minutes because I have a feeling a lot of us want to know more about that. There are some questions that I have asked of me all the time about wedding groups. Second quick question is this, uh, in terms of a complexity, or let me flip it, in terms of uh, simplicity or ease of doing business, is it is it the same, Jeff, or would you say one the, one has the edge over another in, another in terms of lower stress, more simpler? Is it easy to do business with a cruise line for groups or with some of these all-inclusive resorts? I know it's a general question, but take right. it. Right, and, and, and in some respects it's easier, some respects it isn't. I think in a cruise, you are going to have less outside competition than you are in a resort. That's probably the negative of resorts. Simply because the online companies to a great extent have turned selling resorts into a commodity. They don't sell cruises so you don't have that outside competition. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of uh, price matching when we sell resorts simply because we are literally in competition with the online companies. Uh, as far as stress of tracking and as far as stress of actually selling it, I think there's more stress in selling cruise groups than there is in selling resort groups. Uh, resort groups are very straightforward. A lot of that may also be the fact that we don't sell cruises, so cruises are, and, and it really comes down to hammering home that specialization. We don't specialize in cruises, so right. cruises to us seem a lot more complicated than selling sure. resorts simply because we've been selling resorts for 13 years. Yep. Uh, I would say it's it's stressful and not stressful in cruises, and it, but in totally different ways. Okay, It's a double-edged sword with resorts simply because we are competing with the online companies. Yep. Let me ask Sharon a question. Yes. Sharon, the question I have for you is this. One of the things that I teach and I encourage in group boot camp is not to sell, when it comes to groups now, the off-the-shelf, bare-bones, stripped-down product because then it opens you up for competition, for price right. matching and, oh, I can get it for $5 cheaper. But when it comes <laughs> to a group, I preach that it gives us the ability, the opportunity, to be creative and create a package so that it so that the package includes this this and this 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 and this and they can't price match it because you've already built in special things you've created one price point you've made it simple for them and basically you're giving them the things that they probably would have already uh, or would have ended up paying for when they got there potentially right. would have been sold out potentially would have sold more so I know I'm I'm talking a lot here but my question is <laughs> can this can the packaging still be done on the resort side so that and I know all inclusive is all inclusive but are there still opportunities Sharon to create a package for a group that makes it uh, highly competitive it there still is and we Jeff and I were discussing that a couple weeks ago to try to make it look a little different so you you know they're not out there shopping now I've included I mean we always have transportation we can bump it up you can have private transportation um, we throw in you know here's a, a tour a snorkeling tour or a marinarium or whatever to whatever destination we think they're you know that they're going to um, we always offer the insurance but on the side, we try not to package it because it's, you know, very optional. But we have lately been trying to come up with different ways to package that so they are not out there shopping it. We see it more and can do it more with Hawaii mm -hmm. than the okay. all-inclusive market. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the opportunity with all-inclusive is great because it's all-inclusive. Right. The, the negative is that it's all inclusive. It's all inclusive, people, right? <laughs> we we have this debate on the river cruise side a lot too, because a river cruise, and I know you guys don't specifically, you know, focus on river cruising, is that right. they already include so much too. So we're always de mm -hmm. debating. Uh, all right, we're going to go to the uh, the comment question board here, Lena. And, and Lena, I got your name right, I think, right? So I got it right, which means I don't have to buy you lunch yet, but I promise 
I will. Stuart, can, can I, can I interrupt yeah. you and add one, add one yeah. more point? And, yes. and that is when we sell Hawaii, one of the great ways that we do that is sell multi island vacations. Mm -hmm. That's something that the competition is not good at. So we can now make ours look different by not only adding tours, but by doing multi island vacations. And they can't go and stop that when they do that because the competition really doesn't do it that way. Right. Yep. Uh, I get it. Okay, let me read Lena's question here. To tell clients that you have been there and know the product is great, it definitely gives credibility. But what about when you are starting out and just have not been everywhere you want to sell? She says, I want to sell high end, but at the moment I don't have time or the funds to visit all the destinations I want to sell. So this is a great question because now you've been in the business 20 years, focused on all inclusive resorts for 15. You've had a chance to experience a lot of these resorts, but there was a time when you were first you were first uh, uh, get, getting started. So you everybody starts off in this position. What recommends it, recommendations or suggestions do you have to 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 lean in everybody else in boot camp who wants to get in but they haven't been to all these resorts yet? That's fine. I mean, you can, you can actually start with one resort, and I'll tell you how we did it. We were, uh, Sharon came from an agency that sold a lot of sandals and beaches. We had been to a number of the sandals and beaches, so we started out focusing on sandals and beaches. As we, uh, as we grew and we had got to experience other resorts, we started adding those resorts. So you can start out with one resort and be a specialist in the resort. I know a lady in Florida who uh, all she sells is sweets on Royal Caribbean. That's it. That's her whole specialty. And she makes a very good living selling nothing but sweets on Royal Caribbean. So you can start out small and add to that. You can also educate yourself enough to become a quasi-expert simply by First of all, there's three steps. First, you go to the resort's website that you want to sell, and you glean everything from that website. Second, you go to a number of the companies that offer educational opportunities, and every one of the resorts, the major resorts, will offer an educational opportunity where you can become an expert on those resorts. So you can take that. It's going to give you enough information to begin selling those resorts now when you add it by going to that resort and experiencing it, it's adding to that information. Uh, there's two ways you can do that. You can go on a FAM, uh, and that's the next step. The third step is going and actually staying at, at that resort as a guest because you'll get a totally different feel for that resort by staying there as a guest as you do on a FAM. So you can start small by with one or two resorts, Take the courses, become an expert that way, and then start going on fans, then start doing, and you reach the point where we do we do our own fans. We do not go on structured fans. We will set up our own fans. Uh, and so you can start small by doing it that way and just focus on one or two resorts. Uh, yeah. Some people focus on one or two resorts, and that's all they sell. I know a lady, all she sells is sandals. That's it. That's all she sells. Right. Yeah, I, I, this is great stuff what you're sharing with us, and I just want to make sure, uh, Diamond, I know you had posted there were volume issues. I think they're gone now. I think everybody can hear us all great now. Please confirm if you will. Uh, I want to pick up, and everybody listen up. This is very important what, what Jeff said. I want to highlight this, which is that just in general, as business people, we tend not to not to start selling something or launch something new until we feel we're ready. So what do we do? We we read books, we educate, we enroll in boot camp, we, we go on fam trips, but but all too often, and this doesn't apply to you guys who are in boot camp, because you're in boot camp, you're doing it. There are plenty of people like, I'm not ready to start boot camp, but I need in. There are thousands of agents who say that to me. I, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Well, what, what are you going to be ready? Why, why not now? And, and even if if you're in, You'd be surprised how much you already know. So, so just get started. And as Jeff said, don't you don't have to make excuses. You can actually go out and say you specialize in this either group of resorts, right? Because if you go to one, uh, if you go to Moon Palace 
it's you know you or if you go to a Rio, if you go to a beach, is you even though you may not have been to that one in that location, you're quasi an expert, right, Jeff? You're a quasi expert because yes. you're familiar yes. with the product. Yes. Just like yes. I remember back in the day, I've been in the business almost thirty years, and before there were more ships you can count, agents used to say, "I can't sell." Serenade of the Seas because I haven't been on it. I've been on Emerald, but not Serenade. What are you, what are you talking about? Oh, it's structurally, the ship may be different, but it's the same thing. Don't give me that. So, hey, folks, pick one resort. Go there. Know it. Love it. And I bet you've already done that. Start there. Then add yep. the second. Then add the third. But what? But what, one of the biggest things we're hearing now is, and this, and this has to go with groups when I tell you, Tell the world brand that you are groups, right. and they'll come to you. Jeff and Sharon have told the world that they are all inclusive experts. Don't go to them yep. if you want Alaska. Of course, right. they get those calls yep. because they're referrals. People look right, yes. but be and that's bold. a whole that's a whole other course of what we do with that. <laughs> oh, we basically I, we bring on ICs that have different areas of specialization we do. So now we get that Alaska call and goes through the the IC that specializes in Alaska. Magnificent. Hello. Therefore you never say no. What you do is this is wonderful. I'm so glad you've called. You know what? I'm not your guy. I'm not your expert. You know my expertise, right? Oh yeah, inclusive. Well I'm going to pass you over to Alice. She's our Alaska expert. As much as I know about all inclusive, she knows about Alaska. Yep. I'll keep my eye on her, and she'll keep me up to date on your trip, but she's going to take care of you. We good with that? Wonderful. Click. Yep. All right, here we go. Yep. Waldo wants to know, hey, Waldo, uh, do Jeff and Sharon charge an upfront fee for their knowledge? Waldo wants to know. How do you work with fees? Uh, we don't, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'll be upfront about it. As far as selling all-inclusive resorts because of the commoditization, it's hard to charge a fee for that. Now, if you're doing FITs and you're putting together piece by piece, absolutely you need to charge a fee for that. Uh, the reason we don't is we have reached a point in our knowledge where it takes us about, we, we know by the time we get off the phone with that client and qualifying them, we already know what four resorts we're going to recommend to them. So the only research we have to do is practice. We don't have to research the resort because we specialize in that. Right. Uh, and That's if right. you're doing all-inclusive resorts, our commission levels are high enough that we really don't have to do that. Our commission, our average commissions run between four hundred and six hundred dollars a day mm -hmm. when we're not doing groups. When we're doing well, groups, to six hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, four to six hundred dollars per sale. When we're doing a regular sale, when we're doing groups, it could run up to three, four, five thousand dollars in commission. And because, again, I can't drive as much because we're experts, we don't have to do a lot of research. I talked to agents. I've been researching this for three weeks, and I said, "Well, then don't list that as your specialty because if you have to research it for three weeks, you're not a specialist." Right. Yeah. So if you become a specialist, it cuts down on your amount of time. And increase your, but if you're doing FIT type business and you're even doing Hawaii all inclusive and you're making an FIT, definitely charge an upfront fee for that. Yep. But don't charge. I'm going to I'm going to caution people: do not charge a fee until you sold yourself and what they're going to get for that fee. I have a client that literally called me and said, "I talked to an agent and said we can't talk to you until you pay us fifty dollars." You've got to sell yourself what that client's going to get for that fee, and then you tell them, guess what? For only $50, we're going to give you this, 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 and this. Right. So that's how, okay. that's how you introduce fees. Okay. All right. No, that's fair. I appreciate that. Waldo, you got your answer. And hey, everybody, I know for some reason, uh, Jeff and Sharon's volume is, is, is going higher and lower, not cutting out entirely. I don't know why. Actually, I do. It's the gremlins. It's the technology gremlins that just want to aggravate us and give us stress. That's what it is. So uh, thanks for hanging in there, everybody. You know, it's coming in, coming out, and what? What do you look? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? All right, I have. A, I want to talk groups with uh, with Sharon. I have a question. Okay. Uh, with, with Sharon regarding groups, 
Um, okay. Hey, Sharon, a question regarding yes. groups. In terms of um, what do you see are the, uh, the current trends for groups in terms of the most popular themes? Why? Why are they? Why are they wanting to do groups? Are, are the theme? I wonder if the themes are the same with cruises or just in general. What? what why are they? Why are in they general, the themes are there's two. There's either family where they're doing multi generation and they you know they're scattered across the U S. They want to come to one meeting point. They don't have to worry about who's going to cook and get out and stuff. So that's one big thing that we do a lot. And the other is just social groups. You get a lot of couples who want to travel together, and they, you know, go, and they can be from different different states too. But they again meet up. They could be brothers and sisters in that case, but those are mostly couples who just want to go and have a good time. Okay. All right. And let's talk destination wedding groups. Um, are you? Is that business growing for you? I don't know that it's growing as much as the other type of groups. It's it's stable. Um, I, yeah, there's more competition in the wedding one, and I think we've kind of cut back a little because they're the harder groups to sell. You like mm -hmm. them because when guests come, it's easy to book them in. They know where they're going, and you know it's pretty easy. But some of those brides can be a little difficult. <laughs> Wait, is that why they have the expression "bridezilla" for real? That's yeah, wonderful. for real, for real. That's interesting. So I want to ask a question to everyone who's in the audience right now: Do you do destination wedding groups, and are they stressful? Is a good friend of mine in the business years ago used to always say this: Is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> are, are you, you know, for the amount of work and effort you're putting into a destination wedding group? Uh, and, and if you account for all the hours you put in, are you making money per hour? Is it making sense? Because we just heard here from a high volume shop that that it's not you like it, but it's not particularly the business that uh, you necessarily love because it's there's a lot of work that goes into it. Did, did I sum that up right, Sharon? Right, and it's it it is stressful. Uh, you get the guests who call in who they're out shopping it too mm -hmm. and they may not want to book into your group because they've gone over here and hey that's $50 cheaper so you know now it's taking away from your bride because as you do a group the more rooms you get the more amenities you know she gets and right. she gets upset with you <laughs> Right, so I, that's that was a big question I get asked all the time, and whenever our focus is destination wedding, and I, I try to tackle it as best I can to give my tips, I want to hear it from you. You've got a destination wedding group book, you're working with the bride, and, and you know what's at stake for that bride. They need to sell uh, you know, a certain amount to get you know, the full benefits and so forth. What happens when somebody books outside? Do you do anything to dissuade that early on? And and the sec part two question is when it does happen, what do you do? Well, we do try to dissuade it, of course, because you know initially we had we help the bride with her save the date, the agency that they should be calling, and who they should be contacting the agent. We mm -hmm. try to work with you know each customer on a case by case basis. Everybody comes from a different destination we do realize they will be out there shopping it and if they do book somewhere else I mean there's really not much you can do <laughs> uh, we still on some if we have a lot of rooms we'll still do the courtesy of putting that person's name on our list that we send to the bride and groom saying didn't book with you know book through Expedia or, or wherever because initial or at towards the end, we also send that list to the wedding coordinator. Yeah. So we try to make it as complete as we can as a courtesy. Yeah, yeah, as a courtesy. Because ultimately, um, it's it's the bride and groom's relationship with those people. Uh, right. Because it won't be a secret. And so I tell everybody, you know, it, it can't be a secret. Uh, everybody's got to know that. Sure, you could book it every place else or any place else, but if you do. Uh, it, it's only going to impact the bride and groom 
because they, in order to have the event come off the way they've planned, whatever words you use, um, it, by by not booking, you know, through through, through the, the the central point, um, it's going to it's going to not affect me, the travel agent. You can say that, right. but it's going to affect <laughs> you, your bride and groom, your family. You know, I've heard stories where it was the father-in-law of the, either the bride and the groom that yes, booked yes. outside. Like, oh, <laughs> booked God. outside, and some resorts. It is mandatory that you book within this group and you have this group code or they're not going to be included in some of those other functions. Yep. And that's some people key. have timeshares. Absolutely. Uh, and I, this is one of the things I try to tell our, our agents is that is try to work with resorts who have that commitment to groups. The resort uh -huh. where, that, where you can be comfortable going to the bride and groom and all the guests. And, and all of my boot campers know this because this is key, group launch sequence. If you're a guest in the Ask Stewart Hour right now, first of all, welcome. I know Angela's a guest here, so thank you so much for all the other guests that are here. But part of boot camp is the brand new group launch sequence, which teaches you how to launch a group so it doesn't bomb. It could be the greatest group in the world. You go to open up for sale and <laughs> it bombs. <laughs> Okay, so you can take all everything you've been taught, everything the suppliers have taught you, the DSMs to be, everything you've learned, toss it in the garbage, use my system, it's gonna work. System. I hate to use the word system. It's not a system. It's just a whole it's flipping the whole the marketing strategy. So my point is that's the perfect time. Okay, during the, the whisper came, the save the date, when you're doing your sequence of events, your presentations, that's when you start to plant those seeds and you tell people. I know what you're thinking. You can go online and book, 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 and maybe you can save a buck and a half, but you won't be able to come to the wedding. You won't be able to come to the cocktail party. Oh, you won't have a seat at the dinner table. You know, stuff like that, but it's got, you've got to have that re uh, commitment from the resort. All right. Uh, let me see. Cherry has a, co uh, a comment. When a new resort opens, how long do you recommend to wait before sending a group there? Uh, three to six months. There you go. We we, we just ran into that situation at yeah. Breathless Riviera, and they didn't open in April as scheduled. They didn't open until after late late in May, and a group was going in April. I mean, they were reaccommodated, and <laughs> but yeah. not what you want. You yeah. don't ever do it on the yeah. on their opening because it's a soft opening. Everything yeah. isn't open. They'll open, but maybe the spa isn't. Maybe three restaurants. Mm -hmm. So, no, we always wait. Yep, yeah. uh, Debbie. Debbie has a funny comment. I refer wedding clients to a colleague because of exactly what Sharon said, which is, and she put in caps, <laughs> no bridezillas. <laughs> so yeah, Debbie just exactly said, Debbie says, pass. <laughs> Pass it to the left. Thank you, Pass. Debbie. Uh, Robin says that she's done uh, destination weddings, but she's phasing them out over group sales. So that's interesting. So Robin is, is making a definitive choice that she's not going to specifically target destination weddings, but but just go for groups, but not particularly the niche. Because, you know, a group, and then you can subgroup to destination weddings and so forth, but not to not to focus on that niche. So not thank you for name, sharing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Robin, if there's a, if there's a, a reason why, a one line reason why, type it in. I want to know. We want to know, and we want to share it. Um, I just I just wanted to say something, Stuart. That they uh, also what's happening is everybody that comes into the industry thinks doing destinations weddings is very easy and a great way to make a lot of money. So what you're seeing, too, is there's a lot more competition in destination weddings, and we're seeing our growth in groups, but groups other than destination weddings. Yeah. And so it's it's a, we're doing, we're adding adventure groups is a new yeah. field that we're getting involved in is adventure groups, Interesting. simply because that's a new area. And if you can kind of, you really keep your eye on the industry See where the industry is going, what's becoming popular, and if you can get in on the ground floor of some of these new areas, you can open up a whole new specialization group and your business will just go right through the roof. I'm going to let that sit out there and resonate for about 30 seconds. I'm kidding. Not going to wait 30 seconds. Yeah. But, but <laughs> see, listen, this, this excites me, okay, because I'm not the guy doing it. You're, got, you're, you're doing it. 
uh, that when you pick a new area, and instead of destination weddings, you're going for adventure groups. So you're going to become new experts in that area, specialize in those resorts, those hotels that do that, and understand the needs of someone who wants an adventure. Right. And 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 then it comes to you, and it's all about, as Guy Kawasaki says, the who am I marketing, so that when they come to your website, which is the first place they can look, they know who you are and what you do. And if you say you do it all, it, you, you're blurry. You know what I mean? That it's not it's not clearly focused. Why why you? So you you're just like every other. Age. You do everything. No no no. I want someone who really 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 gets all inclusives. Who really gets adventure? Because this is a very important trip to me. And I tell those people because I, I run into agents all the time that say, "Nope, I'm going to be a generalist." And I said, "Look, if you have to do that, sell other things, but become an expert in something. Even if you sell other airline tickets, you sell other things. At least become an expert in something. Become that go-to person for something." Hey, Jeff, I just want to, I don't know if everybody knows or has met you before, but you do, uh, I see you a lot on the training circuit. I know you teach, you always teach at Cruise World, where yeah. else are you? I just want everybody to know. Uh, I did the, uh, there's the Destin, Destination Wedding Consortium, and they had their annual meeting in Las Vegas, and I spoke there. I also went to, I was just in Hawaii speaking for Travel Weekly at the, uh, at their conference in Hawaii. I went to the ASTA conference and spoke at the ASTA conference. Uh, my, my background is business and sales. That's what my background is. And so that's what I do training on, is I do training on business. I have a webinar I do that's called How to Manage Your Business by the Numbers. Mm -hmm. And then I do uh, How to Qualify Clients or Why I Fire Five Potential Clients a Day. Uh -huh. So it's well, that type of training that I do. Is I do the sales and the business type training throughout okay. the, throughout the industry, and then I help Sharon whatever I can. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to the boards here. We got a lot of comments and questions, and this was in a response for this is from Lori in response to my question about if you hey guys if you're doing this let me know is it is a good business not so good business you want to do more she says no destination weddings honeymoons maybe but not the wedding. Which is, which is interesting. Michael says, uh, hey, Michael, absolutely not, and not is in caps. I've had too much fringe experience with wedding groups to want to tackle them. So this is, I, I, honest to goodness, folks, this is interesting information for me that I didn't realize the level of, uh, I don't even want to say complexity. Let's just call it stress, yes. I guess. Yes. Uh, hey, Sam, it's Sam's stress. in the house. And it is, and it is complex. I mean, we'll get guests that will call and change their mind about the dates or this. And if you have 50 guests and they're all calling you with these specific things, well, we want to change our date. Well, we want to go three nights instead of four nights. And it's just a continuous stream of that type of work. So, yes, it's good money, but understand what you're getting into as far as stress and the amount of work when you do destination. Honeymoons are great. We do probably in excess of two to 300 honeymoons a year. So honeymoons are great business. Destination weddings, they're good business, but make sure you understand what you're getting involved in. Yep. So, so let me go back on the two to 300 uh, honeymoons a year, and they're largely at all-inclusive resorts around the world. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you for defining that. Sam's in the house. Hi, Sam. She says she does Hawaii destination weddings. So that's that sounds like a good combination because Hawaii, there could be some interesting uh, opportunities in terms of itineraries, although... The wedding is going to take place at one facility, and you sure hope they don't change the date on that one. Yes, <laughs> Debbie. And the, and the uh, other thing you run, the other thing you run into in Hawaii is it's a little harder to do destination weddings in Hawaii than all inclusives because all inclusives have these big wedding uh, groups within the resort that handle the wedding. You don't always have that in Hawaii, so you tend to have to be more of not just booking the travel, but becoming involved in the wedding coordination, more so in Hawaii than you do in, in Caribbean and Mexico. Interesting, because that's one of the things I'm sure none of us want to end up doing is being the wedding planner. We want to take care of the travel arrangements. 
not being a wedding planner. Uh, Debbie has a comment, and again, there's there's capital letters. Listen up, everybody. Uh, she she writes Debbie Harden. She writes they are absolutely too stressful. Now I I say that because it's all caps, and there has to be about twenty O's. <laughs> <laughs> So, Debbie, how do you really feel? Uh, the end result can be profitable. Just doing the travel portion can be lucrative and sometimes rewarding. But that's this is interesting feedback we're, we're, we're getting here. Um, Cherry has another comment. She says, I just can't bring myself to do the weddings. I have enough headaches dealing with regular groups. Uh, big ups, <laughs> big ups to the ones who do. So, you know, definitely, uh, if it's for you, You'll know it. You feel it. You're gonna go. You're gonna go crazy into it, just like Jeff and Sharon have chosen to go crazy into all-inclusive resort groups. Okay, and you can see one of one of the spoils of that. One of the fruits of that are honeymoons. Okay, who you don't have to deal with mom and dad, the siblings, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, the, the stepson, stepdaughter, whatever coming too. Usually, they're just going on their own. Uh, uh, I'll Lena, tell you a, a funny story. Yeah. We had a we had a bride that did a destination wedding and she was from Boston and we got a call from the grandmother who we yeah. thought was calling the book. She was calling to yell at us and wanted to know why we made her granddaughter get married out of the country when there's a perfectly good church right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, then, you know, you get that kind of a phone call and you, it's like they're trying to put guilt on you and you had... Nothing. Oh my God! <laughs> wow, I feel for you. Um, oh, by the way, on the screen you see there's a picture. That's of uh, Moon Palace. Now, my boot campers probably know this, but because because whenever I travel, I'll always post a little video. I'll just go on Facebook and I'll do a 360 and say, "Hey, everybody!" And this goes for my my travel professional friends and my family. And 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 you guys probably saw this, all you travel professionals. I, I just hold up the phone because, of course, all these resorts have free Wi-Fi now. And I say, "Hey, I'm here, Moon Palace, Jamaica. You, is there anything you want me to check out for you? Any cocktail you'd like me to try? Any food you'd <laughs> like me to sample? Because I assure you, I tried every cocktail humanly possible. I ate everything that they put out, and I think I did every single <laughs> activity too. But that's another way to build your expertise, especially if you haven't been to a resort or this is new. I know they've been running fam trips, but it's delightful. It's really lovely. So I just just want to let you guys know that that's a uh, uh, a picture. And, and if you got any questions for me, I'm happy to help to help you. I think, I think that's asks, a great that's a great point, Stuart. And I, I wonder is that if they join you, they get that. There are other boards on that if you have a question about a resort, you can ask that question, and you'll get 30 responses from people who have been to that resort. What you're finding in the travel industry today that may not have been so 15, 20 years ago, people are willing to help each other, and they're willing to share information a lot more today. So just ask for that help if you need it or that piece of information if you need it. And I think Stewart's Group's a perfect place to start with that. Yeah, yeah that's great. I agree with you and I thank you for that. Uh, Lena says, how do you feel about giving gifts, etc.? Is this necessary? I have a few prospects who, asks ab who ask about this. Uh, I, I make a nice little booklet with all their docs, destination info, etc., etc. Cost me about 18 bucks to print. I put it in a nice document holder, but, uh, but uh, all but that is that's all I give. I feel I give my time and my expertise. Isn't that enough? What what would you say, Sharon and Jeff? I, I I would say in in normal circumstances, yes, we give some gifts, but it's only to our very high end clients. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the gifts we give are the stuff we get when we go to trade shows. <laughs> oh, brilliant! <laughs> Because we have a closet that has a rack in it that must have yeah. probably 50 bags hanging on that rack that we got at yeah. trade shows. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so it's, it's, I don't, honestly, I don't think it makes a difference, a big difference, if you're giving everything you, you have as far as your knowledge, your experience, your service. I don't think it makes a big difference. 
but it does tend, and, and it really anymore, it doesn't set you apart from anybody else simply because everybody's doing it. So That's right. I, I'm kind of on the fence of that. I'll give you Sharon, and she can give you her. Whether we give gifts or not? Yeah. Oh, whether it helps. Uh, I, honestly, I don't think it helps. I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen an instance where, okay, they gave me three luggage tags, so I'm going to go back to them, or they gave me a $10 Starbucks card. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't seen any, and no one's ever thanked me. Yeah. When you send when you send that, we just sent a huge box of items, uh, some beach bags, um, luggage tags, pens, uh, document folders, things that we had, of course, but to a bride and groom who were getting married in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We had to call her to see if she even received it. <laughs> Right. Now, granted, those yeah. things were free, but it wasn't mm -hmm. free to ship it. And you'd think mm -hmm. she'd have said, oh, thank you. She had initially asked us for things they could mm -hmm. put in little bags for their gifts. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen. Yeah. And, and she loved this part of the travel agent. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll make a couple quick questions here. By the way, Anna, Anna may or may not still be on the line, but she just saw this posted on my Facebook site, by the way, which is Stuart Cohen Show. That's my public uh, Facebook site for travel professionals and of course boot camp we have our own private community but Anna wants to know if this is being recorded the answer is yes will I post a link the answer is yes so you can watch it later so thank you uh, Anna for joining us I want to make a couple of quick comments about gifts give you my two cents here number one if if you do it once with a guest you got to always keep doing it because there's going to be an expectation. Case in point, I was on a cruise many, many years ago. We sat, you know, back in the day when you sat at the same table at the same time and you were matched up with people from around the country, around the world. I miss those days. I miss those <laughs> days where you really get to bond with your waiter and you get to bond mm -hmm. with new people. Well, in any case, we sat with this family and they traveled all the time. I'll never forget this. And they whispered to it. They were actually disappointed they didn't get the bottle of wine. Bottle of wine. Huh? That the travel agent would always send. But there becomes there. So if you send, start sending a gift, if you begin that as a tradition, there's going to be an expectation that they're going to get something. Number one. Number two, it's, it's about your expectation as a travel professional. You're hearing it loud and clear. If, you, if you go to a lawyer, does your lawyer, the lawyer give you a gift if you do business with him? No, but he'll give you a gift if you call him to thank him. Yeah, he'll he'll bill you for the, five, for the five minutes. Um, so, so don't have an expectation that you're going to get that thank you. Because all they want, they want a great trip, they want great value, they want to make sure you're there, they want everything to go perfect. So that's just icing on the cake. Just let go of all expectations that they're going to call and thank you. You just have to sort of assume they got it because I've heard that all the time. When I was a DSM, BDM with the cruise lines, they got the travel agent asked me, did you deliver that bottle of wine to that stateroom? Well, if you ordered it, then it was. Well, the, the people never said a word that they got it. Well, and, that, and, and I get that. I would hear that all the time. Um, and and the, the other thing is, real quick, because there's more comments pouring in here, which is, um, yes, take advantage of all the – uh, uh, well, what do they call when I was on the supplier side? Uh, uh, the little tchotchkes, tchotchkes, okay? Whenever you get tchotchkes, if it's got a logo on it and they're going to that resort or that ship, yeah, give them out. And, and I think, you know, a, a nice gift because the wine could be dangerous. What if they don't drink wine? What if they like red, not white? What if they only drink Zinfandel? Or what if you send them Zinfandel and they don't like Zinfandel because they think it's something you sip by a pool with ice cubes because it's too sweet to say. You know what I'm saying. So, you know, you don't want to risk giving something they don't want, they don't need. Okay. Uh, maybe something that's beautifully personalized. You buy it in quantity and, and it's, a, it's, it's a nice gift. It's, it's something, a keepsake. I don't know. Or don't do it at all, to Sharon's point, too. All right, here we go. Uh, let me see. Waldo says, so the minimum size for a group is two. Uh, Waldo wants to know when it comes to all inclusive resorts, uh, what are the minimums? Are the minimums? Is it the same as the cruise industry? There are minimums, um, and resorts can have different levels of minimums to give amenities. So we always say five plus, because at least with five, everybody's going to get a discount because we're getting a code, and at least is taking that off. Mm -hmm. If it's an M A M resort, that sixth room value comes back. So 
To us, five is the minimum. Okay, five is the minimum. And uh, do you earn TCs? Do hotels, do resorts pay? Is that, so you just said that TC, TC credit, the free, the free room, same thing. So you, they do it's right. the same. And, bowl and again, resort specific. If you, the AM have that 3G promotion where that every sixth room up to a, I think it's three could come back. Whether it goes to the customer or you, that's up to you. Uh, Ryu hotels are huge in giving back X amount of credit for X amount of rooms. So yeah, mm -hmm. they. In, I guess you'd equate that to a TC, but they're all they all vary a bit. But in, within within resort parlance, uh, five rooms is considered a group. Okay. Okay. So that's that's a, a pretty sizable difference from from cruises. So Waldo, that's a great question. Uh, Robin is commenting again on destination weddings. My time is too valuable to play the game with DW guests who are shoppers. And I hear loud and clear. You know, there's two ways of looking at this, folks. And you know, this goes to Robin and everybody. Everyone's a shopper. Everyone's a shopper unless they are a repeat client or a referred client. But still, they've got a little bit of shopper in them. Because they have yes, an expectation that you're going to meet, and if you don't, they're gone. Boom! <laughs> Everyone's a shopper. Yeah. The key is having that elevator speech, having that message, having the website, having your branding. Who am I marketing to? To to either get rid of them fast, say, look, we're not going to have a relationship here. You're not going to be happy with me because I form a relationship with clients. I don't want this to be a one night stand. If you want a one night stand. Go on the internet and find there's a million ways you can book that, and the more you, the more time you have to waste, you can probably save another buck and a half. I'm not your guy. Goodbye. Sometimes they'll call you back and say, No, 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 no. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to drive a car out of the lot and the wheels are going to fall off. I need your help. So I think that you know we have to review that in this business, and we're all shoppers, and you have to love it when they call you because it's the chase, it's the game. Can you nail them? I wrote a book. Da, 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 how to turn inbox leads into sales because travel agents, you have a little contact form, and I'm not trying to sell the book to my boot campers, but I just want you, if you haven't read it yet, it 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 it, it flips your, your mind around that when that lead pops in, some agents or some business people be like, oh, uh, are they just shopping me? Are they real? What do they want? And I give you a whole different perspective because I play the role of the guy in your inbox. And I'm here to tell you, I wouldn't have wasted my time to put that lead in there if I didn't need help. Because if I didn't need your help, I would have booked it online without you. If I'm in your inbox, I need help. And I'm ready to buy. Don't tell me. I, anybody who says I'm just shopping, bull. They're not just shopping. They're ready to buy. Anybody who is just shopping is ready to buy. Trust me. Yep. And, I, and I'll tell you one other thing. Like going back to did we charge fees, is... We do such a thorough qualification process that we get rid of probably 80 to 90 percent of the tire kickers before we even get to the next step. Yeah. Yeah. So that when we get to the next step, what we what we end up with is a higher close ratio simply because we've gone through an in-depth qualification process to weed out those people before we get to that step. So it, yep. it's, I mean, we, we spend probably 20 to 30 minutes with a client qualifying them before we even talk about travel. Yeah. And that gets rid of those people before we get to that step. Now, this is a great point, everybody. Okay, what's your perspective on this? Are, do, you, do you feel that you're the one being shopped and they're the one weeding you out? Or do you feel that you need to shop them and weed them out. Because listen to me carefully, I'm going to take off my glasses and I'm going to stand up. No, if I do, you can't see my face, so I won't stand up. Plus, I'm, not, I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> um, at least I'm wearing shorts, you have no idea. Oh, geez. When you are confident in what you do, confident in the services you will provide, and when you only want to work with people who you really want to work with, it will come through on that phone conversation. It will come through that you don't mess around with me. It will come through that you're not somebody here to get beat up, to be used, and not 
keyword desperate because if you come and I'm not suggesting anybody's doing this but I'm saying if you rise up and say you know what no 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 you're not gonna shop me I'm gonna shop you I wanna make sure I want you in my client portfolio and then you take over the conversation you start asking the questions and you shift it and you position yourself as the expert then they'll look at look up to you and this is not in a in a in a prideful way they're going and go wow this guy this girl's good oh man i wouldn't think of booking with somebody else because you've taken over the conversation so just a perspective folks i just want to share with you all right here we go we got we got four minutes left and we got so many comments but i can't read till i put my readers back on deb deb shall deb shallow says Definitely no destination weddings for Deb. Sam says, I should have been more specific. I do high-end weddings in Hawaii. Don't do budget weddings or the we just want to get married on the beach. So interesting. Thank you, Sam, for, for uh, um, clarifying that's a whole, that. That's a whole specialty within a specialty group. Absolutely. That's great. Sam, awesome. Thank you for clarifying because we've been talking in generalities, although a bridezilla is a bridezilla. It is a bridezilla. Uh, Karen says here, uh, no one thanks them. Do they personally know the bridegroom or group leaders or are these internet leads? My clients always thank me for gifts and she's, she's grateful for that. So this is interesting because um, it's, it's, Karen, that's awesome. I think that's awesome. That, that you're getting this feedback from your people and, and, and you could be the gift that you're giving. Now we're not going to have time now but Karen, uh, what are you doing? What are you giving? What's your secret? What's your trick? That's pretty damn cool that you're getting that feedback because everyone's so focused on the trip that they may not have time but clearly, I mean that's great, I want to recognize that. Waldo says two weddings were enough for Waldo. Now, Waldo, does that mean you've been married twice and you want to stay single or doing <laughs> destination wedding groups? Will, hey, Will, Will's in the house. Do you typically work directly with the resort or with like a vacation consolidator? But you got to answer in 30 seconds. Do you typically work directly with the resort or with a vacation consolidator? I'll answer in two seconds, both. Yep. Both. We work with the tour operator and we work with the resort, both. Working with the tour operator does not preclude you from working with the resort. Okay, uh, give me another 30 seconds on is there an advantage of or how, how do you make that choice? Is there an advantage of what? I'm sorry. How do you make the choice if you're going to work direct or if you're going to work through a, a, a tour operator or vacation consolidator? We do, we do everything through a tour operator. We don't book unless we use a tour operator simply because it doesn't preclude you from working with a resort and you have the tour operator behind you as a second source of support when dealing with clients. So we, we always do everything through a tour operator. Okay. All right. We've got one minute left, so I'm going to rifle through these. And, folks, if I can't get to them all, I promise I'll post them on Facebook and answer. Uh, Diamond says repeat shoppers are the worst. They use you specifically for research, knowing they're going to book elsewhere. How do you handle these repeat offenders? You know what? Let's, let's pick that up on Facebook. Let's pick that up uh, on our Facebook site, too, in our next Ask Stewart hour, because I, will, I want to dive big into that. That's an awesome area for us to tackle, Diamond. I'm right. glad you brought that And really, that really hits on the qualification, too, which is a whole different, that's a whole session in itself. It is. And here's another session. Patty, phenomenal question, but it came in too late. Will they share the qualifying process? So I'm going to talk to Jeff and Sharon after. Either we'll bring them back or we'll see what we can do to, to see if they'd be willing to share some of their expertise, how they do the qualifying. Patty, great question. Ray, hey, Ray, is there any way to see how Jeff qualifies his clients? Another question like that. See, you got everybody thinking and hungry and interested for more. Deb says, I've been doing more shopping, more shopping them. I call it qualifying. Exactly. That's what I meant. You shop them, qualifying them. Deb says she does gifts. They're logged. Uh, they are uh, logoed, logoed items that they can actually use. I get their friends asking to buy them. Interesting. Deb, perhaps you can share with us what, you, what, what, what your strategy is. And Karen says in terms of what she gives, nothing special, wine or flowers or coffee or coffee card. Just, the, just the, this week a client sent me an email from their river cruise. They love the flowers. So that's awesome. Hey, everybody, guess what? You know I start on time, actually early. I end on time. 
uh, but I will not end till I give a big thanks to my audience, all of you who are guests who are in boot camp for being here today. Remember, our next Ask Stuart Hour is July 7th, and it's just me, a little old me, and I think I'd like to tackle all these other issues we didn't have time for. But a big, big, big thank you for our expert guests and my friends, Jeff and Sharon Millar. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.